All right, so first things first. For the people that wanted to ignore the obvious and wanted to believe that Luffy wasn't talking about Kizaru, make yourself known right now. Because that was the most clearest interpretation that you guys could have gotten and didn't want to believe it. Was it for agenda? Probably. And that shit was clear as day. A lot of you guys kept coming at me thinking I'm ignorant for thinking it was 100% Kizaru. Guys like Karma, 2104. Yeah, you'd love to see my reaction, wouldn't you, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I'm petty like that, boy. If you guys gonna hold her seats on me, go with both ways. I'm gonna hold her seats on you guys too. <laughs> Listen, I love One Piece and I love Oda, but the pacing for these Egg and Island chapters have been quite slow. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the next chapter we see Luffy and Kizaru exchange dialogue and they end up having a big serious clash after and it cuts away. Then we see Zoro and Luchi stop the fighting to talk and then we have a big clash and then we cut away. And then we cut to you guys going extreme death with that subscribe button. Every day, it's an extreme death fight to get you guys to cooperate. Seriously, I I would appreciate if you guys could leave a like on the video and subscribe especially the people that keep tuning into the channel now the chapter starts with sent tomorrow and it's titled sent tomorrow i'm not gonna lie to you sent tomorrow is a pretty boring character that none of us really care about if you do i'm so sorry but i'm not gonna talk a whole lot about it he has a flashback with kizaru then ultimately gets put in a pack it's only a one-sided beatdown, even though there is moments where Setomaru is able to block Kizaru or evade him. People have agendas saying Kizaru sucked because this and that. I'm not gonna entertain it. <laughs> Y'all should know how Oda writes his stories by now. Kizaru shows off some cool attacks that we've seen before. He got that boy Setomaru running. <laughs> he got that guy running like he's Sabo running from the Gorose, you know what I mean? <laughs> now later on, shit gets a little bit crazy. Luchi tries to sneak Vegapunk, but Stussy ends up protecting him and she catches a finger pistol. She could collapses to the floor. Honestly, I can't say I care too much about Stussy besides certain reasons. In this moment, Sanji uses it as a chance to trap Kaku in the same bubble they trapped the Seraphims, because obviously Kaku would help his mans. Somehow this is being used to slander Sanji's name. Sanji was ducking an injured Kaku. He's scared, guys. Listen, kid. <laughs> You want Sanji to beat the fuck out of a bedridden guy on a stretcher? Like, what are we talking about, bro? People expect Sanji to start kicking and come slamming down off the top ropes with a Diablo Jambi Ifrit Jambi concasser on a guy who's laid out on a stretcher with bandages. Like, what? He strategically got rid of a problem before it happened. But you guys want Sanji to beat the fuck out of a guy on his deathbed till he died. And a lot of people are complaining about the fact that Sanji lets Stussy get hit. It's weird, because, like, how is Oda supposed to make Sanji save someone who's saving someone else. It's kind of excessive. In that moment, Sussy jumps in front of Vegapunk to save him. But Sanji would jump in front of Stussy to save her? It's kind of like, what, what's going on here? I think it's such a spontaneous thing for Sanji to need to get involved. If Rob Lucci tried to sneak Stussy in instead of Vegapunk and Sanji didn't interfere, I could kind of understand what you guys mean. But Sanji trying to save someone who's trying to save someone else and he has to act on such a spontaneous moment, it's kind of asking for a lot. It would be kind of weird. Alright, so now we cut to Zoro attacking Rob Lucci and they end up clashing. Now, this is where the controversy starts. They end up clashing, Rob Lucci blocks Zoro's two swords which are hockeyed up with his Artemis leg and Zoro ends up taking him outside. My god, I love you Zoro but <laughs> This is what you call sending a motherfucker outside. <laughs> so they end up getting flung outside while they're still clashing. Now obviously, this doesn't really mean shit. And there's people, and probably a lot of my Sanji fans, are gonna try to make it out like it does. Just show them the panel of Apu blocking Zoro's swords. Then that brother caught a 1-2 Shishi son son right after. But Zoro is sweating though. Sweating scaling is kind of retarded. So I got no comments on that. This is a bad predicament for Zoro. I didn't want Sanji to be put in this because he gains nothing from fighting Rob Lucci. I think because everybody expects Sanji to be strong on Rob Lucci, right? It's kind of the same thing with Zoro. People actually expect Zoro to shit on Rob Lucci. If you look like he's struggling a bit in this fight, it's only gonna make him look worse. That's what I'm saying. Zoro has nothing to gain from this fight. He just has something to lose. But yo, that's not how you're supposed to look at One Piece. I'm obviously gonna like this interaction. I'm gonna like the altercation. <laughs> but that's just how a lot of the community is thinking. I'm gonna be honest. Let's talk about the clash between Kizaru and Luffy. Kizaru is blocking an advanced Conqueror's hockey kick from Luffy. Kizaru over Kaido confirmed. It's the first thing I said when I seen this. Now, after the fanboy stuff left my brain for a little bit and I seen shit a little clearly, this might not necessarily be advanced conquerors hockey, 
but it's weird and Oda needs to stop doing this and he needs to make this shit a lot more clear. Why the hell would Luffy be attacking Kizaru with basic level Arnimen hockey? He's not using the barrier Rio and he's not using advanced conquerors hockey. You might as well just be kicking him at that point because that's really not gonna do shit. What is Oda trying to show here with the Black Lightning? What's the point of showing Black Lightning coming from basic Arnimen? With specifically a character like Luffy who has way more advanced versions of hockey. I don't understand. Like, what, what is he trying to get at here? Listen, the Lightning could low-key be considered to be potent enough to be advanced Congress hockey. It is kind of, and it's kind of not. Obviously, there's a difference between the more potent Lightning. Like, you could tell when it's a little more fat. These are a little bit more thin. But what makes it look like advanced Congress hockey is the way it's trailing off of Luffy's leg. Regular Artemis clashes and Artemis Lightning doesn't really trail around someone like this. And it's similar to when Luffy kicked Kaido. Luffy's basic Artemis is what's hitting Kizaru. I mean, fine. I don't know why Oda would want to show us that. The context in which this is used makes me feel like it's not Artemis hockey. Honestly, it doesn't look too far off advanced Congress hockey. But for now, I'm gonna say it's not. I'm gonna chill out, even though the agenda is telling me otherwise. By the way, a Rayleigh agenda was formed this chapter because in the last panel, when Luffy kicks Kizaru, he tells him that, hey, we're 100 times stronger than we were at Sabote. And Shaka said to Luffy and them, Rayleigh is 100 times stronger than you guys. And Luffy. Does that mean Rayleigh at this current age is as strong as Luffy? That's obviously some shit scaling. You can do something with that agenda. Rayleigh over Kaido confirmed. I'm joking because Rayleigh admits he wouldn't be able to be Blackbeard right now and Luffy can. Well that's another assumption. Like You never truly know how strong Blackbeard is right now and he's gonna be one of the strongest to ever exist alongside Luffy. So besides all that regarding the chapter I enjoyed it. It was a good setup chapter. Obviously I want the pace to pick up a little more so hopefully in the next chapter we get into the action right away and it could take up the entire chapter as for my predictions i'm assuming luffy and kizaru will get serious off the bat because luffy went to gear 5 right away against rabuchi i don't know what he's planning to do and as for the callback to sabodi that is a really monumental moment because kizaru you're punking on kids back then you're not gonna punk on shit anymore but i don't expect kizaru to actually be defeated but i don't expect him to win i expect him to escape zoro i expect him to beat the shit out of luchi something might happen to where that fight gets postponed. I don't think it's gonna be a full-on fight to the point where Luchi is on the floor like how Luffy defeated him back in Eni's lobby. I do think they're gonna have to escape the island. Now when it comes to Sanji, I do think he's gonna have a Mr. Prince moment. Again, I do think he's gonna find a way to clutch out something on this island. He's gonna have a solo mission to do something cool because he doesn't really have a matchup as of right now. He's gonna save someone, kind of like how he saved Momonosuke in Wano, something along that nature. We're unfortunately on break next week because Odo is involved with the release of the live action. By the time you see this video, it should have came out today i can't wait to be honest i'm excited i don't know if you guys seen that one sanji clip in the baratier when he was talking to owner zev and he was talking to patty like i wouldn't expect you to understand I mean, it's called imagination patty i wouldn't expect you to understand i'm like yo this guy is a god I watched it like 50 times, yo. Tads is a go to the actor, but tune in for my next video that I'm working on as you listen to my voice right now. It's gonna be different. Hope you guys can support it. And yeah, peace.